Good evening from London. My name is Vikas Pota, and welcome to today's T4 live stream. Um, as you know, I take this opportunity to bring friends together to explore a few of the uh, the knotty issues and uh, the subjects that I think uh, you will be interested in. I know that there's a there's a whole load of teachers and school leaders and educators who watch these, and I want to make sure that these are useful. Um, and so I thought what I'd do is bring on two of my friends on this subject of entrepreneurship education uh, to this discussion because it's an area that I've long been interested in. Uh, you may not know this, but I, uh, I actually have written a book on entrepreneurship um, and I was an entrepreneur myself and I am starting that phase of life again. So I, I've been reflecting uh, on what I've seen during World Education Week. And one of our guests is the headmaster of a school uh, in Scotland that actually presented a showcase during World Education Week on, on entrepreneurship and, and how the Dunoon Grammar School actually does it. And it was uh, singularly one of the most incredible things I've seen in a long time, very creative. And I posted about this on my LinkedIn and my, my Facebook pages uh, about uh, to, to encourage you to have a look at it uh, at the showcase before today's interview. So please welcome uh, David Mitchell, the, the headmaster of, uh, of um, the Noon Grammar School, and Nick Kafka, who is my friend uh, of long standing, who runs an incredible NGO called Teacher Man to Fish, which also promotes entrepreneurship education around the world. Uh, so welcome, gentlemen. Um, welcome to the live stream. Uh, I know both of you are in the UK. Um, Nick, where, where in the world are you so that, so that everyone can, can hear from you? Yeah, currently in uh, North London under lockdown, but uh, still still feeling positive about education. And David, welcome. W where are you? Please tell everyone. On the, the west coast of Scotland, about an hour from Glasgow. Um, and like Nick, very passionate about education. And so I, I'm always curious because I'm a, I'm a Londoner. Uh, when someone says that they live in Scotland and they live an hour from Scotland, there was a detail that you forgot. And I think it captures imagination that... It, how long does it take to get to your school from Glasgow and what's the journey you take? Well, from Glasgow, there's there's an option. You can drive um, down the motorway, the M8, and you come to a ferry terminal and you get a 25-minute ferry um, across to Dunoon. Or you get the train from Glasgow um, to another ferry terminal and get the, the different ferry. So it takes about 25 minutes in a ferry and an hour to Glasgow. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I just wanted to paint the picture as to the diversity of schools and where they are. And Danoon is a great example in that regard. And so, gentlemen, I mean, we the subject of entrepreneurship, um, you know, I ask a very basic question to start with. Why why is it so important? Like when we when we think about, you know, the, the clamor for uh, numeracy, literacy, you know, and grades in particular in schools, uh, you know, I, I, being of Indian descent, uh, you know, my parents and my mother, uh, you know, constantly says you didn't become an accountant, you bec didn't become a doctor, you didn't become a, you know, a, a lawyer uh, and you became an entrepreneur. Um, you know, so I'm trying to understand how you would articulate what the importance of entrepreneurship education is. Uh, I'll go to you first, Nick. Yeah, I mean, obviously, entrepreneurship education is great if you want, want to be an entrepreneur. And, you know, there are more opportunities or more need than ever for that, for that. You know, we work a lot in the developing world and the informal sector where people just have to be necessity entrepreneurs is, is huge and, and sadly growing. But even in the uh, developed world between technology uh, uh, opportunities or the increasing number of small, medium enterprises, you know, entrepreneurship as a future career path is uh, you know, ex extremely important, but um, but actually, you know, we we really do entrepreneurship education in part because it's such a marvelous opportunity to learn a wide range of skills that will be useful whatever you do in the future. You know, the leadership skills, communication, problem solving, teamwork. These are useful in the workplace. These are useful as an entrepreneur, but anything as a change maker, as a as a citizen of the society. So Nick, uh, before I come to you, David, I want to ask Nick a, a, another question. So you, your, the name of your organization is very interesting, uh, but tell us about your work as well as where that name came from. So Teacher Man to Fish is the name of the NGO and you can go to www.teachermantofish.org and you'll see the work that Nick has been leading for many, many years now. Uh, but so Nick, over to you, tell us a little bit about your work. Well, actually, org.uk, otherwise you end up with a very uh, different kind of organization. 
much more fishing related, I think. But yeah, so the, the fish thing is, a, is just a metaphor. You know, it's really rather than giving someone a fish, you teach them how to fish and they can eat for a lifetime. So it's about giving people a hand up. It's about empowerment and giving people, you know, putting people first, giving them agency. Uh, and really, you know, we see the, uh, you know, many problems in a, in a lot of developing countries and people stuck in a rut, stuck in a rut of poverty. People, if they're lucky enough to get education, not benefiting from that education because there aren't jobs uh, for them to come into afterwards. So actually we run, uh, our main program is called the School Enterprise Challenge. Uh, and it's a competition any school anywhere in the world can take part in. So, uh, you know, please join us from Scotland. Uh, but the program involves a, a 14 step process of uh, guided uh, guiding children through setting up, planning and setting up a real for profit business. So that business aims to solve, solve a social or environmental issue. So it's doing good in the community and it generates profits, which uh, ensure that the activity can be sustainable in, in future years. Um, and some of that goes back towards supporting the, the school to, for instance, uh, sponsor kids from more disadvantaged backgrounds to, to, to participate. So we have this thing that's uh, an awards program. You work up through uh, bronze, silver, silver, gold. Schools can partner up around the world. Uh, and we provide lots of teacher training and free resources to help schools through it. So for a kind of comprehensive entrepreneurial kids leading the way experience uh, you know it's really second to none we think but nick you know um and again we know each other and therefore i'm asking these questions for the benefit of our audience i know what the answer is but uh, the question i wanted to ask you was it sounds very similar to other programs the enter enterprise challenges have existence existed since day dot right uh, i remember being part of my own school's enter enterprise challenge um what's different about what you do so the, so the, there's a few things and you know for instance, uh, you know, in particular, if you're in a developed country, there are a lot more uh, opportunities to take part in these programs. You know, I growing up, you know, junior achievement is, uh, is sort of one of the popular ones and, and is a great program. But if you're in uh, rural Uganda, if you're in uh, far flung parts of the world, these kind of programs aren't actually available. So we make uh, these kinds of programs available. But some of the kind of key differences that we're, we're trying to achieve are you know, using a business as a sort of ongoing learning opportunity. So many programs stop just at creating a business plan. So they create a fictional business, which is a bit educational, but is not nearly the same thing. And some programs, uh, students create a very short lived business. You set something up, you run it for six weeks, you close it down. And there's lots of learning in that as well. But that again is not you know the day-to-day -day lived reality of a business if you really want to know about the challenges of running a business run something which attempts to be sustainable ongoing and then actually every day you face a new set of developmental questions you know how do we find new customers we can't just keep selling things to our friends and family how can we take the business in different directions have different products you know so you can actually take uh, the learning and the business up to a, a different level which means you know, kids get a lot more out of it, but also in these really resource constrained environments, the schools can generate a really useful amount of money from their perspective. Uh, and that then can allow them to, you know, buy computers or buy paper or, you know, wh whatever their needs are, solve problems in their community. And these other entrepreneurship type programs don't really do that. And I remember like through, from my teacher prize days, uh, I remember Bijal Damani from India, who was <laughs> one of your main advocates and and she was, I remember her, 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 you know, Galaxy Bazaar, I think it was that the yeah, exactly. and the benefit that it generated for that community was just immense. So thank you for sharing that. David, I come to you. David, I mean, like I said in my introduction, singularly yours was one of the most creative, um, uh, you know, showcases and one would suggest absolutely bonkers, uh, you know, and I mean that in the nicest and most affectionate of ways. Uh, I mean, you know, the point that Nick made was interesting around entrepreneurship for the sake of entrepreneurship, I'm not sure. But I think the point of your showcase was to think about creativity, think about immersive learning experiences and all of those points. Um, tell us about your school and how it's developed this particular um, you know, expertise in entrepreneurship education. Well, well first and foremost, um, we didn't want to have um, entrepreneurship and enterprise as a, as a bolt-on to our curriculum. Um, it has to be, um, if it's going to be effective, um, embedded in the curriculum. 
Um, and we have worked really closely with a number of, of partners who I'm sure you may have heard of, Young Enterprise Scotland, Scotland's Enterprise in Schools, Apps for Good, um, the Youth Philanthropy in Initiative, um, the Subway Challenge. Um, and what we've taken from that is we've taken those um, pieces of, of, of work, we've um, taken them and embedded them into our junior curriculum. So the young people um, are immersed in entrepreneurship um, from mm. first year, as soon as they enter the school. Um, and as I said, to, to make it work, you have to do that. It's okay, for example, to have um, the odd um, event such as a bake sale where you're making some money for charity or, or you're holding a, some, some event at a weekend to, to, to make some, some money for the school or whatever. But that's, that, that's a one-off. Um, and then to ensure that you are developing the skills that we've been speaking about there, that has to be done on a daily basis um, across the whole school and across all curricular areas. You also mentioned, because at right at the very start, about core skills such as literacy and numeracy. They can be taught using enterprise so creatively. Um, and that's something that we have tried to develop in, in Dunoon Grammar School. Um, we also recognise that the young people that we have just now, yes, they're our future, but they're also our here and now. Um, and we need to be developing them so that they can take our country um, in the future to, to make it a better place um, and, and take risks. It's not all about um, being safe all the time. Um, and that's what we are trying to teach our young people in, in Dunoon Grammar School. Albeit, as I said, you said that the presentation was bonkers. It wasn't safe. It was not a safe presentation for us to deliver. But, you know, that is what our school is about. The young people taking a lead in, in their learning um, and ensuring that they're, they're getting the best opportunities to develop these skills for learning life and work. And so when I think about entrepreneurship, um, it's fine. I understand teaching it. I understand what you're saying in terms of improving other kind of areas of learning as a result of it. But how do you actually do it? I think there's a question um, that I've been asked um, for a long time is how do you embed entrepreneurship education in schools? Uh, how does it take root? Um, we, we, when I first arrived as head teacher in the school in 2013, um, th there was a, a member of staff in my school, um, the principal teacher of business and computing, Paul Gallinach. He was very, very keen to develop entrepreneurial skills in the, the, the school. Um, and we decided that we were going to spend a number of years um, to, to embed it in the school. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you have to pilot things, you have to develop things, um, and then from there, you take it, and staff see the success of what happens, and then they take that on board themselves too, and they start to develop within their own curricular area. They also start to see, particularly in the senior phase in Scottish education, if, if young people are enjoying their learning, the numbers increase in subject areas. So that's an, an added bonus as well. Um, so it takes time, but it also takes staff to take a risk. Um, and it also, as a head teacher, you have to give staff time to be able to do that. And so Nick, I come back to you now in terms of these, firstly, before I come to you, I just want to say that there's people watching from all over the world. We have uh, Melinda Wilson Dance from Chicago, who's watching on YouTube. You got Wahiba uh, on Facebook. Uh, you got Oksana asking a question whether uh, that this is, uh, entrepreneurship education is different to normal system education. We've got Cecilia from Argentina who, who's watching. You've got uh, you've got Jordan watching. Uh, you know, so you have people from all over the world, which I find quite find quite fascinating. Now, the subject I want to go to next is all around um, all around Nick in terms of. You know, what is the impact of your work? I mean, how have you measured or assessed it? I mean, have there been any stratospheric successes entrepreneurially through your programs that have devised something new, changed the world, and so forth? Please share with us. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you put it in those terms because actually that, that last thing is what we're not really fostering at all. And we, we haven't come across, you know, we're we're not about the sort of you know the, uh, the epic entrepreneur the the Elon Musk necessarily. We're about really building the skills and turning everybody uh, you know unleashing the inner entrepreneurs. We've had an awful lot of entrepreneurial success, but we're you know it, it tends to be lower key than that. 
but still in terms of people's lives, it, it makes a huge difference. So we did a, a study recently of our work in Rwanda, which showed that the kids coming out of our programs, once they'd finished schools and gone gone out into uh, you know, setting up their own businesses or into the workplace, were earning three times as much as the national average for, for their age range. So, you know, I mean, that that's a phenomenal change. You know, I'm sure you'd be happy because if you were earning three times as much. Um, so for them, that that's a huge impact. So that's one of the measures. Uh, but we look at a, a, a lot more things beside that. So you know, we're we're really uh, focused in the short term on some of the skills acquisition, and uh, you know, particularly we're interested in empowering girls who often don't get the same uh, opportunities in many countries. And we see, uh, you know, we use a brilliant tool called the Skill Builder. Um, which is a, a way of assessing a, a variety of skills and problem solving. Uh, you know, the, the girls on average were getting about 60% more than the comparison groups. So, uh, you know, big, big advances there. Um, transition rates, you know, again, in the sort of UK or many country contexts, you would just assume kids go from primary school to secondary school. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, somewhere like Uganda, it's, uh, you know, something like between 25 to 40% of kids make that transition. You know, for a study we did there, it was gone up to about 94%. So actually doubling the number of kids getting from primary to secondary school, because they take homes on their entrepreneurship ideas, they help their families to generate more income, their families have more support, believe in their education, you can actually push kids through the education system as well. So a really wide variety of uh, outcomes beyond just the, um, you know, the immediate thing of earning more money or, or having, having the next Elon Musk. Uh, so, David, what successes have you seen come through your school? Well, we, we have won um, a number of um, events. Um, you know, um, our, we're apps for good um, event. We've won YPI. We've won the first uh, the first Scottish school to win the the Entrepreneurial School of the Year. Um, so we, we've seen that kind of success. But more importantly, we've seen our young people's confidence grow. That for me, that is. Um, the, the big success story. Yeah, I'm seeing young people coming into school, fairly shy, you know, young people in first year, 12, 13, and then they leave our school um, as confident uh, young adults. Um, that's the success for me. And I, I, I truly believe that's down to entrepreneurship. I, I, I believe it is given that, you know, they have to go out, they have to um, speak to people, they have to present, um, they have to research, um, and they when one group sees something happen, particularly say for example, our first years watched, we just had, had our Youth Philanthropy Initiative final there um, on Tuesday, where we didn't, when we donate three thousand pound to a local charity for, with support of the Wood Foundation. We let our first years watch that, and it's a second year project. But our first years see that, and all they want to do is better it for the following year. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's a success because. You're trying to get them to realise. Well, how can I how how can I take that to the next step? So it's for me the success has been the confidence, um, and um, seeing the young people leave going into different types of businesses, um, maybe not going on to university, going on to a, an apprenticeship, and um, because they've they've started to see things differently. So that's the success stories for me. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Um, you know, there's a comment that came in, Nick, uh, and it speaks to my point as well that I, I wanted to ask you, both of you, actually, as to who are, who are the entrepreneurial role models of the youth of today? Um, I'd be keen to hear what you hear from in the field. And there's a question that's coming on LinkedIn for you, Nick, in particular, about, about, from, uh, about your point on Rwanda. Uh, did you work with businesses as part of this initiative in Rwanda? And which parts of Rwanda? Do you want to go first at answering this question? And then we'll go to David about who the entrepreneurial role models of the next generation are. Yeah, so um, we're we're um, working in Rwanda around the the Kigali area, and also in a, a much more rural area called Nyaraguru. Um, and whilst we're always interested in working with businesses, it does um, does seem to be a, a particularly hard thing to to pull off. Um, so we, you know, I have to say that, you know, that's one of the things, if I could wave a magic wand and uh, find a way to strengthen our program, I'd try and build those connections because frankly, there aren't, uh, you know, there, 
in you know if you're exposed to sort of you know regular media there are the sort of uh, heroes the richard bransons or the alan sugars if you in the uk you have an idea of what successful business people look like if you're from a uh, very rural communities actually you don't necessarily have those role models and it's quite hard to to bring people in to to, to put them in touch but I, I think that is that is you know one of the elements of, of a successful program and yet yeah, certainly we, we need to try and find ways to make that happen. And so this point, I don't know where David's disappeared to, I'm sure he'll come back. But the point I think um, I wanted to bring up with him and you touched on it was, you know, what can businesses do? So business, I mean, there's lots of companies that say that they want to in engage with schools. What is your experience of it? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we haven't... Um haven't managed to make that that work as com comprehensively I, I think again you know that some of the programs that take place in the uk for instance you know companies are financially more robust have have a lot of staff see it as a personal development thing i think you can get those kind of interactions indeed the sort of the junior achievement type program relies often on on these you know business mentors it's a brilliant thing but but it's much harder to pull off in other par parts of the world where the need is is particularly great so where we've been sort of more successful on, on that front is actually on getting the, the very the graduates from the schools to, to come back and to uh, support the school businesses and, and to effectively act both as sort of uh, mentors and, and uh, role models. So, um, you know, I, I didn't give you an example on the sort of success front of, you know, what I meant by the sort of lower scale, but still very concrete success. But say in Uganda, there was a kid at one of our schools called Sharon who'd come from a uh, you know, a very poor family in one of the sort of slum communities. You know, he went to school, got excited about uh, our program, which was only doing poultry rearing. You know, it, it's not uh, not the same as developing exciting apps, but that gave him an idea that he could probably do it just as well on his own account. He set up something in parallel, uh, used that chicken business to pay for his university fees, got a uh, undergraduate degree in business administration and was able to kind of get a get a good job and on the side of that he's then running a, his own little poultry unit because it's good not to just rely on your wage employment and he goes back into the school and he mentors the the school kids and he helps the teachers to do it so it's um you know i think that's how we get that sort of uh, virtuous cycle of improvement. I think, uh, you know, it would be nice if we could draw people out of regular businesses, but actually sometimes you have to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Uh, and that's what's happening in a lot of our schools and a lot of these communities. And so as an NGO, Nick, I take the opportunity whilst David is not here. As an NGO, what has been the impact of COVID on you, given that schools are shut, uh, but you don't actually operate schools? So what is, I'm keen to know what your experience has been over this period in terms of funding, in terms of programs, please share with us. Yeah, no, it, it's been a, extremely challenging because you know our core work involves schools and as soon as one by one, the countries we work in, the schools started shutting down, suddenly there wasn't that opportunity to, uh, to, to, have, to support the running of in-school programs. So, um, you know, that was hard, but actually, you know, these, from a, good crisis you can you know foster some creativity of your own so you know we've been realizing for a while actually it would be great to be able to reach out to kids directly anyway because so many uh, kids don't get to do our programs because you know there, there isn't a, a teacher in the school who's prepared to run it or the school administration doesn't support it so we've spent some of that time creating a, a standalone program called the uh, Enterprise Adventure. And you know anyone who's interested can go to enterpriseadventure.org to have a look. Um, and this is something that's uh, mobile phone based. It's an app that takes a kid through a, a very similar kind of experience about planning and setting up a, a business that's styled in terms of gaining superpowers and having an adventure along the way. So uh, yeah, we've been working on that as well as uh, for the teachers who have some connectivity putting on webinars and we've been getting thousands of teachers attending these teacher wow. professional development webinars. Um, sorry, did we get David back or no? No, we haven't. Please carry on. Okay. So, um, yeah, there, you know, again, one of the challenges in a, in a lot of countries is that there is very little in service training for teachers. Teachers receive some training, hopefully at the start of their career, and then not necessarily so much after that. So there's a big thirst, I think out there, for uh, professional development and we've been running uh, these webinars on growth mindset 
uh, introducing interactive pedagogies into the class, project-based learning, things that uh, very much support entrepreneurship education, um, but actually don't um, go on, sadly, uh, you know, in, a, in enough places. So, uh, yeah, these between the webinars and, and developing a whole new program, we've been uh, you know, holding, uh, holding out against COVID. And, uh, yeah, things are, things are looking brighter. Schools are beginning to open up now. Nick, I, there's usually an engaged audience with regards to these live streams. And I wanted to know if someone wanted to help or, um, or engage with you, how do they do that and what do you need? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, so, so many opportunities, you know, for, for anybody who's a, a parent or any kids out there watching, the Enterprise Adventure is a, a great thing to do. So go to enterpriseadventure.org. If you're a school teacher or a school principal, the School Enterprise Challenge, schoolenterprisechallenge.org, is a, a brilliant initiative with lots of prizes. There's about $50,000 worth of prizes and all sorts of certificates and things you can get for yourself and your schools by taking part in that. We partner with a lot of other uh, NGOs who uh, work with schools and want to strengthen uh, uh, the skills education going on or interested in uh, youth employment. So uh, a lot of opportunities if you're a uh, an NGO, just uh, send a mail to nick at teachermantofish.org.uk and, uh, you know, we're always interested in extending our work to, to more s schools. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, funders, we, we rely uh, still extremely heavily on uh, trusts and foundations, grants, individual donations, corporate partners. So, you know, we're, all, we're always uh, interested in those kinds of funding partnerships too. So I should say it's Nick with N-I-K as opposed to N-I-C-K at teachermantofish.org.uk a fish to .org.uk. Yes. Nick, thank you so much for your time today. I know we've come to the end of our live stream and uh, I also thank David and I will write to him after this, uh, this live stream. Uh, he's obviously dropped out because of connectivity or some issues. Um, but again, I'd like to encourage you to go and have a look at his, uh, his school showcase because the Noon Grammar School did an amazing job uh, at World Education Week and it serves as an example, example of what, what is possible uh, virtually and online it doesn't need just to be a, a Zoom panel discussion. Uh, and the creativity and energy they put in has to be applauded. Um, and I thank them for that. Uh, and Nick, that's, on the, that's on your YouTube channel, the link to their uh, presentation, because I only caught half of that during World uh, Education Week. No, it's there. And I've also put it in the comments uh, over here in terms of that those that are watching can go to. And I also posted it earlier today. So you can also access it directly. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for this evening's live stream. Uh, and we wish you the, absolutely the very best. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll have some more live stream interviews next week. If you have any ideas for themes that you'd like me to look at, uh, also please leave a message on here uh, on any of the platforms and I'll have a look and you know, there's lots of people around the world who wanna uh, tell you about their work uh, and I would be more than, more than happy to do so. And so I see that, I see that David is back. David, I'm you're sorry. back. Sorry, it just seemed to put me out. I couldn't get back in there, sorry. That's okay, David. I, I put it down to connectivity issues. I was just wrapping up and saying thank you. But I, I do have one more question, David. I just I do want to ask you is how do you engage businesses? We, we engage businesses really well in this, uh, the town. We're very lucky to have lots of local businesses who, who support the school. A lot of their children come to the school. Um, so that's one of the ways we, we manage to, to, to do it. Um, but um, the Subway, for example, the local store, the Subway store, the, the sandwich uh, shop, um, they support us really well and do a Subway challenge every year for us. Um, but it's really, um, again, just ensuring that the businesses see the benefit of having the, the young people um, learning these skills. And at the end of the day, they may be going to work for some of these businesses as well. Do you know? So, um, and that, that's how we try and sell it to them. It's not a hard sell, trust me. Well, thank you so much for your time today, David. Um, you know, if someone wants to get hold of you or actually see your work, uh, how, where do they go? How do they get in touch with you? They, they can either look at our website um, or they can email me. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to put my email address um, on the, the, the Twitter feed or whatever. But it's just david.mitchell at uk. Okay, thank you so much. And again, the reason why I think that's important is that if you're a school leader or a, or a teacher or a school um, and you want to know about entrepreneurship education, the entire purpose of the Global Showcase was that schools like Danoon could showcase, but not just for the sake of showboating, 
uh, it was to share actually how they've developed their expertise so that you too can also develop it in your school. And so when you have leaders like um, like David and Nick who are willing to share their experiences, I would grab them by, uh, by their shoulders and make sure that um, I, I, I turn them upside down, shake them out for everything that they know so that I can implement. Um, thank you so much, gentlemen, and I look forward to staying in touch uh, 